This series of videos will teach you about the gut-brain mechanisms that regulate our food intake and energy balance. We'll also discuss how these mechanisms influence our body weight and our propensity for obesity. There are three learning objectives for this series of videos. This video will cover our second topic learning objective, which is to describe how the brain regulates food intake. Although both overconsumption and inactivity contribute to weight gain, food intake tends to have a greater influence on our propensity to gain weight because it disproportionately affects energy balance. It is much easier to eat 500 calories, which is what you would consume if you ate a McDonald's Big Mac, than it is to burn 500 calories, which is equivalent to running about five miles. So it's important to think about how our brain regulates food intake to understand how we can adopt dietary patterns that promote energy balance. Food intake is affected by both external cues, defined as factors outside of us, such as the sight or smell of food, and internal cues, defined as factors inside of us, such as hormones. These cues affect our brains, our behaviors, and our bodily sensations. However, before we go into these mechanisms, let's first define the terms appetite, satiation, and satiety, and clarify how these sensations determine when and how much we eat. These terms will come up frequently in the remainder of these videos, and it's important for you to have a good understanding of what they mean. Appetite refers to our desire to eat food. The terms satiation and satiety are often used interchangeably, but they are distinct concepts. Satiation is the within meal regulation of intake. This is the feeling of fullness that you begin to feel towards the end of a meal and is the sensation that prompts you to stop eating. In contrast, satiety refers to the duration between meals. You can think of this as how long you stay full after a meal. These distinctions are important to keep in mind when we think about ways to manage or alter food intake to achieve energy balance. Both certain types of foods and drugs can influence our appetite and feelings of satiation and satiety. So a food or drug that is an appetite suppressant is something that suppresses an individual's desire to eat. A food or drug that is a satiation promoter would help an individual eat less during a meal. And a food or drug that is a satiety promoter would help an individual feel full longer after a meal. So let's return to our discussion of how the brain regulates food intake. This is a cyclic process, but we'll start with the brain. The brain communicates with the gut via physiological systems that regulate food intake. This communication drives our eating behaviors, specifically what foods we choose to eat versus avoid, when we start eating, how much we eat, and when we stop eating. This communication occurs via hormonal cues and neurotransmitters that drive eating through our appetite, our desire to eat, and our feelings of hunger. Once a meal has begun and the ingested food enters the oral cavity, the brain senses the various components of the meal, including the taste and texture of the food. These chemosensory sensations communicate the presence of preferred energy-rich nutrients, such as fat and sugar, that promote further eating. As food is swallowed and enters into the gastrointestinal tract, additional hormonal cues accumulate to regulate when we stop eating by signaling feelings of satiation. These cues also regulate satiety, aversion to certain foods, or food-related sickness. Food intake then stimulates bodily sensations that send signals back to our brain to communicate how much and what was eaten. As we eat, our stomach fills up and becomes distended which leads to the feeling of fullness. The macronutrient composition of the meal we eat also influences how quickly we feel full and our desire to keep eating. In addition, if the body detects we have ingested something toxic, like a piece of food that is rotten, we will very quickly sense this through our senses of taste and smell, which will decrease our desire to eat that food or even decrease our desire to keep it in our mouth any longer than we have to. The resulting bodily sensations then send signals back up to the brain and these signals communicate our nutritional state. These signals include gastric distension that results from the filling of the stomach, hormonal signals stimulated by the nutrients absorbed from the meal, and activation of the vagal nerve, which is the nerve that connects the gastrointestinal tract to the brain. 
So let's review this process again, but think about what this process looks like over the course of a meal and how the brain and gut communicate to regulate intake relative to nutritional status. Once a meal has begun and the ingested food enters the oral cavity, the brain perceives various components of the meal, including the taste and texture of the food, via taste buds in the oral cavity and olfactory nerves in the nose. At this point, if the sensations of taste and smell indicate that the food should not be eaten, so for example, if a toxin is detected or the food has gone bad, then taste and smell nerves will signal to the brain that eating should stop. As food is swallowed and enters into the gastrointestinal or GI tract, information about the volume of the ingested food through the mechanical distension of the stomach is relayed to the brain. In turn, these gastric inhibitory signals begin to counteract the positive meal promoting signals from the oral cavity. In addition, as the food is digested and travels through the intestines so the nutrients can be absorbed, various chemical and nutritive properties of the food give rise to the release of a number of hormones and neurotransmitters from the GI tract that communicate to the brain about the ongoing status of the meal and the individual's nutritional state. Signals that travel from the gut to the brain are mainly communicated via the vagus nerve. The presence of food in the GI tract results in the release of appetite-regulating hormones, which stimulates the vagal nerve to signal to the brain that eating can slow down or stop. However, the physiological control of eating also occurs via hormones and nutrients in the circulation. The brain detects a number of circulating hormones and nutrients, such as glucose or free fatty acids, that communicate the availability of circulating and stored energy. These signals can also prompt or inhibit eating. These mechanisms drive our desire to eat, and the mechanisms that drive these feelings of hunger and satiation are connected. As we've reviewed, we feel full when our stomach feels full, and this communicates the volume of food consumed to the brain. In a connected mechanism, this distension eventually decreases as our stomach digests the consumed food and the digested food moves into the intestines to be absorbed. This decreased distension eventually results in the feeling of an empty stomach that then stimulates the sensation of hunger. Similarly, chemical and nutritive properties of food trigger hormones and neurotransmitters that promote feelings of satiation. In a linked mechanism, the decrease in these chemicals and nutritive properties result in a decline in these hormones and neurotransmitters that promote feelings of satiation and an increase in hormones and neurotransmitters that promote feelings of hunger. This is a short, non-comprehensive list of some of the main hormones that inhibit intake or promote satiation or that promote hunger and energy balance. Let's discuss some key takeaways summarizing how the brain regulates food intake. The brain regulates food intake via both external and internal cues. These mechanisms influence appetite, or our drive to eat, our sensations of satiation, or fullness leading to meal termination, and satiety, or how long we stay full after a meal. Through an iterative feedback system, the brain is stimulated by internal or external cues to signal to the body to initiate or terminate eating. This drives eating behaviors and subsequent body sensations. These body sensations then provide feedback to the brain as to whether an individual should keep eating or stop eating. When this process leads to energy intakes that match energy needs, energy balance is achieved. However, when this process leads to energy intakes that are in excess of energy needs, weight gain follows. This may occur when there are strong external signals to eat, such as an abundant food supply or easy access to energy-dense foods and these factors may lead the individual to eat beyond energy needs. That's all for this video. Thank you for learning with me.